They weren't just engines. They were engineering experiments, war machines, and often total mysteries. From rotary beasts to piston monsters and forgotten jet prototypes, these plane engines didn't just power aircraft, they pushed boundaries. Some flew once, some never flew at all, but each one has a story. Today, we're counting down the 15 rarest aircraft engines you've probably never seen, but definitely need to hear about. Number 15, Napier Nomad. Starting our countdown at number 15, we have the Napier Nomad. This wasn't just a piston engine. It was a diesel compound turboprop hybrid that looked like it came from another planet. Built by Napier in the early 1950s, the Nomad featured a massive 12-cylinder diesel core with a turbine bolted to the back, creating one of the most complex power plants ever conceived. The engine was designed to power long-range transport aircraft, combining the fuel efficiency of diesel with the high-altitude performance of a gas turbine. Only a handful of these mechanical monsters were ever built, because they were nightmarishly complicated. The Nomad required two separate fuel systems, incredibly precise timing between the diesel and turbine sections, and maintenance schedules that would make a Formula One team weep. While it never found its way into production aircraft, the Nomad proved that engineers in the 1950s weren't afraid to try absolutely anything. The few surviving examples sit in museums today, looking more like industrial equipment than aircraft engines. At number 14, we have the BMW 801TQ. Number 14, BMW 801TQ. Take a standard BMW 801 radial engine, add a massive turbocharger, and you get one of the most powerful piston engines ever designed for combat aircraft. The 801TQ was BMW's answer to high-altitude interception, producing nearly 2,800 horsepower at altitude when most engines were struggling to make half that power. This beast was destined for the Fokker Wolf Tar 152C Super Interceptor designed to hunt down high-flying Allied bombers. But by 1944, Germany was running out of everything – fuel, materials and time. Only a few prototype engines were completed before the war ended, making the 801TQ one of the rarest examples of late-war German engineering desperation. The surviving engines showcased just how far piston technology could be pushed when engineers threw caution to the wind. At number 13, we encounter the Allison V3420. Number 13, Allison V-3420. Imagine taking two Allison V-1710 engines, welding them together, and hoping for the best. That's essentially what the V-3420 was a 24-cylinder W-configuration monster that produced over 3,000 horsepower when it actually worked. Allison developed this behemoth during World War II for heavy bombers and experimental aircraft that needed massive amounts of power. The V3420 powered the experimental Lockheed XP-58 chain lightning and was considered for the massive consolidated B-36 Peacemaker, but the engine was plagued with cooling problems, vibration issues, and a tendency to shake itself apart at full power. Only about 150 were ever built, and most spent more time on test stands than in aircraft. It represented the absolute limit of what could be achieved by simply making piston engines bigger and more complex. Coming in at number 12, we have the Junkers Jumo 223. Number 12, Junkers, Jumo 223. This wasn't just unusual, it was completely insane. The Jumo 223 featured 24 cylinders arranged in a diamond configuration with four rows of six cylinders each. It was essentially four engines sharing a common crankcase designed to produce over 2,500 horsepower for heavy transport aircraft and bombers. Junkers developed the 223 in the late 1930s, but the complexity was staggering. 
Each engine required four separate cooling systems, four ignition systems, and precision manufacturing that was nearly impossible to achieve consistently. Only a few prototypes were ever completed, and most never ran properly. The engine exists today mainly in technical drawings and the occasional museum piece, representing one of the most ambitious failures in aviation history. At number 11, we find the Pratt & Whitney X1-800. Number 11, Pratt & Whitney X-1-800. Pratt & Whitney's attempt to create the ultimate fighter engine resulted in this 24-cylinder H-configuration power plant that looked more like a mechanical sculpture than an aircraft engine. The X-1800 featured four rows of six cylinders each, arranged in an H pattern that was both beautiful and completely impractical. Developed in the late 1930s for next-generation fighter aircraft, the X-1800 was supposed to deliver 2,200 horsepower in a relatively compact package. But the engine suffered from catastrophic vibration problems, cooling issues, and a tendency to destroy itself during high-power runs. Only a handful were ever built, and none ever flew in an aircraft. The program was cancelled in 1940, but not before it demonstrated that some engineering solutions look perfect on paper and terrible in reality. Taking the number 10 position, we have the General Electric IA. Number 10, General Electric IA. America's first jet engine wasn't just rare, it was revolutionary. Based on the British Whittle W1X design, the IA was built in complete secrecy in 1941, marking the birth of American jet propulsion. General Electric had to learn everything from scratch, creating entirely new manufacturing techniques for an engine type that didn't exist in the United States. Only a few IA engines were ever built, and they powered the Bell XP-59A Aero Comet, America's first jet aircraft. The engine produced just 1,300 pounds of thrust and was notoriously temperamental, but it proved that jet propulsion was possible. The IA engines that survive today are priceless artifacts of aviation history, representing the moment when America entered the jet age in absolute secrecy. At number 9, we have the Klimov VK-1F. Number 9, Klimov VK-1F. This Soviet jet engine might look ordinary, but it hides one of the most unusual features ever built into a turbojet, a built-in afterburner that could be started by pouring vodka into the fuel system. The VK-1F was essentially a reverse-engineered Rolls-Royce Nine with Soviet modifications that ranged from clever to completely bizarre. The engine powered early versions of the MiG-17 and was notable for its crude but effective afterburner system. Soviet engineers couldn't source the specialized ignition systems used in Western afterburners, so they developed a system that used raw alcohol as an ignition source. Pilots literally carried bottles of high-proof alcohol as engine equipment. While thousands of VK-1 engines were built, the early F model with its alcohol ignition system was quickly replaced, making original examples incredibly rare. Coming in at number 8, we encounter the Chrysler 1420 2200. Number 8, Chrysler 142220. When Chrysler decided to build an aircraft engine, they didn't mess around. The 142020 was a 16-cylinder inverted V monster that produced 2,500 horsepower and looked like something that belonged in a hot rod rather than an airplane. Built during World War II, this engine represented Chrysler's attempt to bring automotive mass production techniques to aircraft engines. The 142020 featured automotive-style hemispherical combustion chambers, multiple carburetors, and construction techniques borrowed directly from car engines. It was designed for the Republic XP-47H Thunderbolt variant and other heavy fighters, but the war ended before it could enter production. Only a few dozen engines were ever completed, and most were scrapped after the war. 
The surviving examples showcase what happens when car guys try to build airplane engines. At number 7, we have the Rolls-Royce X. Number 7, Rolls-Royce XA. Rolls-Royce's attempt to create a sleeve valve engine resulted in one of the most mechanically complex power plants ever conceived. The EXA featured 24 cylinders arranged in an X configuration, with each cylinder using a sliding sleeve instead of traditional valves. The result was an engine that was incredibly smooth running but nearly impossible to manufacture and maintain. Developed in the late 1930s for high-performance fighters, the X was supposed to deliver exceptional power-to-weight ratios, but the sleeve valve system required manufacturing tolerances that were beyond what was practical for mass production. The engine also consumed oil at an alarming rate and required constant adjustment. Only about 100 X engines were ever built and most spent their lives on test stands rather than in aircraft. The few survivors represent one of Rolls-Royce's most ambitious failures. Taking the number 6 spot, we have the BMW 003R. Number 6, BMW 003R. This wasn't just a jet engine, it was a jet engine with a rocket motor strapped to the back. The BMW 003R was Germany's desperate attempt to create an interceptor engine that could reach Allied bombers faster than anything else in the sky. The combination of turbojet and rocket propulsion created a power plant that was as dangerous to its pilot as it was to enemy aircraft. The rocket section burned a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and methanol, chemicals so corrosive they could eat through fuel lines if the engine sat idle too long. The system could boost the total thrust from 1,760 pounds to over 3,300 pounds, but only for a few minutes before the rocket fuel was exhausted. Only a handful of 003R engines were ever built, and none saw combat service. The surviving examples are testaments to how far engineers will go when their backs are against the wall. At number 5, we find the Packard X2775. Number 5, Packard X2775. Packard's answer to the demand for massive horsepower was this 24-cylinder X engine that looked like four V6 engines grafted together around a common crankshaft. The X2775 was designed to produce nearly 3,000 horsepower for heavy bombers and transport aircraft that needed power levels beyond what conventional engines could deliver. The engine featured liquid cooling, fuel injection, and mechanical supercharging, representing the absolute pinnacle of piston engine technology. But the X configuration created vibration problems that were impossible to solve completely, and the engine was incredibly complex to manufacture and maintain. Only a few prototype engines were ever completed before the program was cancelled in favour of gas turbines. The X2775 represents the moment when piston engines reach their practical limits. Coming in at number 4, we have the Heinkel HES-011. Number 4 Heinkel HES-011 This German jet engine was so advanced that it wouldn't have looked out of place in a 1960s fighter aircraft. The HIES-011 featured an axial flow compressor, sophisticated combustion system, and thrust levels that exceeded most early post-war jet engines. It was designed to power the Heinkel He-280 jet fighter and later variants of the Messerschmitt Mi-262. The engine incorporated technologies that were decades ahead of their time, including variable inlet guide vanes and advanced metallurgy that pushed German manufacturing to its limits. But by 1944, Germany lacked the materials and manufacturing capacity to produce the ES-011 in quantity. Only a few dozen engines were ever completed, and most never ran properly due to material shortages. The surviving engines show just how advanced German jet technology had become by the end of the war. 
At number 3, we encounter the Wright R2160 Tornado. Number 3, Wright R2160 Tornado. Wright's attempt to create the ultimate radial engine resulted in this 42-cylinder monster that looked more like industrial machinery than an aircraft power plant. The Tornado featured six rows of seven cylinders each, creating a radial engine so large it required its own support structure just to sit on a test stand. Designed in the late 1930s to produce over 2,500 horsepower, the Tornado was intended for heavy bombers and flying boats that needed massive amounts of power. But the engine was plagued with cooling problems in the rear cylinder rows, vibration issues that shook test stands apart and manufacturing costs that were astronomical even by aircraft engine standards. Only a few prototype engines were ever built, and none ever flew successfully. The Tornado represents the absolute extreme of radial engine development. Taking the number two position, we have the Junkers Jumo 222. Number two Junkers, Jumo 222. This wasn't just an engine, it was a mechanical nightmare that consumed more development resources than entire aircraft programs. The Jumo 222 featured 24 cylinders arranged in four banks of six, with each bank mounted at a different angle to create a compact but incredibly complex power plant. It was designed to produce over 2,500 horsepower for advanced German fighters and bombers. The engine incorporated technologies that were decades ahead of their time, including fuel injection, variable speed supercharging, and advanced cooling systems. But the 222s suffered from catastrophic reliability problems, with engines regularly destroying themselves during test runs. Junkers built over 300 engines during the war, but most never flew, and those that did were quickly grounded due to failures. The 222nd consumed enormous amounts of development money and engineering talent that Germany desperately needed elsewhere, making it one of aviation history's most expensive failures. And taking the number one spot, we have the most fascinating and rarest of them all. The Rolls-Royce are... Number 1 Rolls-Royce R This wasn't just an aircraft engine, it was a purpose-built racing machine that existed for one reason, to make Britain the fastest nation on earth. The Rolls-Royce R was developed specifically for the Schneider Trophy seaplane races of the 1920s and 30s, representing the absolute pinnacle of piston engine development. Only 19 R engines were ever built, each one hand-assembled by Rolls-Royce's finest craftsmen and tuned for maximum power output. The engine featured a supercharged V12 configuration that could produce over 2,300 horsepower when running on a special fuel mixture of gasoline, benzol and methanol. But the R engines weren't designed to last. They were built to run at maximum power for just long enough to win a race, then be completely rebuilt. The R powered the Supermarine S6B to victory in the final Schneider Trophy race in 1931, setting a world speed record of 407 miles per hour that stood for years. More importantly, the technology developed for the R engine directly influenced the Merlin engine that would power the Spitfire and Hurricane fighters during World War II. Each surviving R engine is a priceless artifact representing the moment when aircraft engines became works of art as much as engineering marvels. What makes the R truly special isn't just its rarity or performance. It's the story of what happened when engineers were given unlimited budgets and told to build the fastest engine possible regardless of cost or practicality. The result was an engine so advanced and so perfectly crafted that it influenced aircraft engine design for decades to come. Whether they flew once or never made it off the test stand, these engines showed the wild side of aviation history, where bold ideas met mechanical limits. Some were ahead of their time, others were just too strange to survive. But one thing's clear, they all left a mark. Which one blew your mind? Let us know in the comments, subscribe for more aviation deep dives, and we'll see you on the next mission.